Hello everybody and welcome to this live virtual open event at the Northern School of Art, the only specialist art and design college in the north of England. Um, and we are also voted top 10 nationally for art and design um, achievement rate, which is fantastic. Um, <laughs> so I'm Liam Bradley and I'm the recruitment manager here and I'm joined by... Amanda Smith, I'm the quality manager, head of beer levels. Um, and just here to tell you that this is a very passionate college. So we've got a lot in store for you at this virtual open event. You're going to be hearing a little bit more about our programmes. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a virtual tour. You'll hear from some of our student success stories. And then right at the end, you've got the opportunity to ask some questions in our live Q&A forum. But just to tell you a little bit about who we are, we're a dedicated independent specialist art and design college, like I've said. And what that does, is it brings a unique learning experience to students. We're not the same as any general further education college. People are surrounded by like-minded individuals um, who are just interested in being creative and producing creative outcomes. Uh, we have a number of courses that feed into lots of different areas of the creative industry. Um, and people are taught by professional um, practitioners who are well versed in different disciplines in art and design as well. Um, in terms of COVID-19 and the pandemic and our response to that is um, we have put on some kind of blended learning approach where people can um, be taught physically with dis social distancing in place, but also have some online delivery as well. And that is working really successfully for our students. Um, and we will be following government guidelines um, as and when they, they come about. We have your employability prospects um, at the forefront of our minds and making sure we get you ready and equipped for the future. Um, there is a whole range um, of jobs in the creative industry and we do know um, the creative industry uh, may have been impacted during Covid but what did we all do um, during the pandemic and the lockdown? We consumed culture, we consumed art and design, you know we were watching a lot more videos, we were using our devices a lot more um, and the government has been supporting the art and design industry a hell of a lot lately um, and it's going to bounce back. Um, for over 20 years, the art and design industry has been growing um, faster than any other sector um, and it will continue to do so and we've got a lot of confidence in that as well. Um, so we are here, we're an institution that facilitates um, your passion um, and we will nurture you to get to where you need to be. Um, we progress a lot of our students into a university of their choice. Um, we also have our own dedicated higher education provision in Hartlepool as well if students uh, decide to stay with us. You may have heard that we will be soon relocating to Middlesbrough Town Centre. Um, so we'll be going into the heart of Middlesbrough, right near the bus station um, and also not very far away from Middlesbrough Railway Station, which makes us very accessible um, to a lot more people in and around the Tees Valley. And furthermore, getting to us um, is free of charge, depending on where you're coming from, uh, which is fantastic news. We're really excited to be moving into our new building. Um, it's going to be brand new and it's over £14 million um, investments that we were given uh, from the government to do that. I think what's exciting about the new build, Liam, is that it's a building that's been specially designed for us, a contemporary building, you know, that's modern and up to date with all our, it's going to fulfil all our needs for the future. Amanda, do you want to tell us a little bit about the courses that we offer here? Um, well, I think I'll start with the level three. So that's for students who would be leaving school now, potentially uh, with their GCSEs. And um, we have a full range of specialist two year courses, photography, graphics, interactive media, fashion, textiles, fine art, and also um, art and design. And that in particular is a great course if you're not sure what you want to specialise in. All the courses are specially designed to help you make career decisions, especially during the first year, you'll be exploring lots of different materials within your specialism. And then in your second year, you'll be trying to um, make some decisions about which career, which university, which apprenticeship, um, or even which job you want afterwards. Um, They'll be um, supported by um, visiting lecturers, ex-students who are now running their own businesses. So there'll be a lot of um, contemporary and authentic live work experiences for all the students to take part in. Amanda, tell us about our A-level pathway. 
Um, we have a very unique A-level pathway. Um, we have a visual arts pathway, which is includes photography and fine art. We have a design pathway, which is textiles and graphics. And learners will do both of those pathways and then can select either English or art history. Um, following the first year, which is very experimental, it allows you to explore all the different disciplines before specialising in either an A-level in uh, graphics, textiles, fine art or photography. Um, and then obviously your chosen pathway, which was either English or art history. So you're going to come out with three A-levels. I think um, it's really yeah. good for people that are not quite sure what they want to do, but have more of an, an holistic um, experience before kind of making the decision about where they want to firm up with their A-level at the end. It's, I think that's a really good um, distinctive offering compared to what other colleges are offer. Oh, I definitely think so, because it allows the student after the first year to make a much more informed decision about which level they want to complete. Yeah, yeah. And Great. that's perfect. It also supports um, industry that, you know, when you're out there in the real world, in their professional career, you may not just be doing photography. As a graphics um, producer, you may be doing photography, you may be doing some surface design. So the learners get that experience from day one. Mm -hmm. Multidisciplines. Yeah. And of course, another fantastic um, offer that we do here is our foundation diploma course, which has been running for a long, long time now. Um, and it does serve a different kind of student. Um, it's traditionally for people that may have done A-levels in the past, but are looking to um, develop their art and design um, skills a bit further and to go through that exploratory kind of process to find out where they want to specialise in, uh, ready for when they go to university. Um, so you're coming into an environment with post um, 18 year old students uh, you're having a try at different art design disciplines basically uh, with a view to kind of thinking at the end I want to go and do fashion or textiles or graphics or photography at university level and we have some amazing results in foundation we get students in universities all over the country and I know this year in fact five students will be looking to apply to Oxford um, in the next couple of months which is, which is amazing and um, we also get a lot of students coming to our Hartlepool site um, as well uh, which is fantastic. If you're a student who's of a more mature nature, um, we have a course for you too, access to HE. Um, you don't necessarily need any formal qualifications, you need a little bit of a portfolio and a big passion um, and within a year, quite potentially, we will have you in a university place for your first choice. In terms of entry requirements and the qualifications that you might need to get onto us to do a course here, what I will say first is we are an environment which encourages people from lots of different backgrounds um, and that adds to the rich, diverse um, culture and student population here. Um, so we do have a number of courses that suit a number of different levels. Um, in the main, people will need to have a minimum of four GCSEs or above to get onto our level three um, diploma. Uh, five GCSEs are four above to get onto our real level pathway. But if you don't have those GCSE grades, don't worry um, because we do have another course, which is level two art and design. Um, Amanda can tell you a little bit about that. It's a fantastic springboard, an opportunity for you to build your basic skills whilst making, a, again, an informed decision about what area you want to move on to into next. Mm -hmm. So it's a one year programme, lots of different media techniques and approaches um, and then a very simple procedure to progress through the college onto the specialist course of your choice. Anybody that applies to us, we um, encourage them to obviously make an application um, either through our paper form or online. We will invite you in to the campus um, where we'll have a chat with you. We'll also look at your artwork if you do art at GCSE or if you've done anything outside of college, you know, whether you've done your own sketches at home or you're taking your own photographs. We want to see what makes you tick as a creative and where your passions lie and make sure we get you on the right track, on the right course that's, that's suitable for you. So Amanda, I think that just about wraps up the introduction to this virtual open day. Um, what's going to happen now is next you will hear from our course tutors on each of the course areas that we offer. Remember, you do have the opportunity to submit questions using our um, Q&A um, function on this Teams event. Uh, we're also having a live Q&A forum as well at the end where you can ask um, students and staff any questions that you may have. And just remember, the creative industries are still growing. 
if you want a creative opportunity, this is the place to come and I hope to see you very soon so you can have a unique experience with ourselves. Great. <laughs>
kind of mirrored in what's going on in industry and what we set in our curriculum. So we cover a lot from kind of design to pattern cutting to garment construction through to fashion communication, marketing, promotion, um, fashion illustration. We kind of get as much as we can to give you kind of good understanding so that you prepped ready to apply for a university course or apprenticeship within the kind of fields of fashion. Um, we start with a very experimental year where we, in our first year, where we look at um, doing some live projects where you might do some uh, fashion spreads in magazines with live projects through to designing athleisure wear. We've got a jacket project that we do where we run it alongside um, one of our ex students who works for Nike in Portland, Oregon, and she likes to see the work at the end of the project and judge for us um, the, the strongest piece of work. Um, so it's like a live competition. Um, and then we also go on to the end of the course where you'll do your specialised project. And once you've had a good experience of a, a range of, of, of projects, you specialise in what you would want to go into when you leave us. Some of the work students have had have gone off and done promotion and they might be really interested in kind of different ways of capturing a, a fashion audience. So here we've got some kind of stickers and promotional stuff, website design, um, advertising, things like that. Or some students might go on and do design and might specialise in occasion wear um, or outerwear, things like that. You get lots of um, skills and techniques in presentation and developing a, a really good portfolio for, for interview on whatever your next step would be. And we feel that this course really preps you for, for what's expected at you at, in, at degree level or in industry. Um, with the professional skills that are embedded throughout the whole of the programme. You might go on to fashion illustration where we, and we do do a fashion illustration project where we'll do life drawing and, um, and kind of observational drawing and really sharpening those visual recording skills. Um, it starts off really supported in, supported in first year where we'll work three dimensionally, we might work on the stand um, in workshops, we'll all work together and it will help you with kind of displaying your work and following the creative process. Hi, my name is Cass. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the film and TV production course. So it's quite a new course going into its second year this year. Um, and we decided as an art school it was time to create a film course at college level because the film industry and the TV industry is absolutely huge and constantly growing. Um, so £4.6 billion pounds went into the UK economy from the film and TV industry, which is a lot of money. Um, and lots of things are being filmed throughout the North East as well. So the industry is kind of really coming to the North. Um, things like ITV's Vera is filmed throughout Teesside and a bit further as well around Newcastle. Um, ITV's Victoria has been filmed um, in Hartlepool in the past and things like Star Wars Force Awakens um, was filmed in the Lake District which isn't too far from here. Um, so it really shows that the film industry isn't in London. Lots of things are coming to the North East and coming around um, to the North as well which is really exciting. Um, our film course is two years and it sets you up for um, either employment or to go into a degree as well. So we do have a university level campus in Hartlepool that has a film degree. So there's opportunity to progress onto there. Um, just like all the other college courses, it gets you ready to go on to whatever it is you want to do, be it employment or a degree. So across the two years, you'll learn lots of different skills that will get you ready for the film and TV industry. Um, so you'll learn different skills in creating documentaries, dramas, comedies and things. Um, you'll learn the basics of script writing as well. You'll do some editing in our edit suites using Adobe Premiere. You'll film out on location in TV studio space as well. So you'll learn the differences between the two. And it's just a really exciting course for anyone that's wanting to get into the film and TV industry. And we're hoping to start an acting course in September 2021. So as a filmmaker, having actors on location all the time would be perfect for you. So yeah, it's a really exciting course for a really exciting industry, um, a massive always growing industry as well. I mean, what did we all do in lockdown? We watch films, we watch TV, we watch Netflix. So we need people to keep creating those films and TV shows for us to watch. Um, but yeah, hope to see you in September. Hi everybody. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the fine art provision. So this is a level three programme of study that runs over two years. And within that, we offer students the opportunity to explore what we call a multidisciplinary approach to practice. So within fine art, as a context, we look at everything from painting and drawing, sculpture, printmaking, and some digital ways of working. So we offer students the opportunity to develop a really wide range of skills, and we underpin that with theory and critical thinking. 
Within year one, learning opportunities are more diagnostic. So we teach students to have a really broad skill base. We teach you lots of different techniques and processes, ways of working. We introduce you to different media. And then within the second year, we enable you to focus that and become really independent learners. In the second year, we look at tailoring your portfolios into the avenues that any student then chooses to progress onto. So we can then look at different ways of working within the context and really suit your individual needs and pathway progression. Our learners move into generally higher education, but because it's quite a diverse portfolio that we build, it means that those progression avenues are really open. So that means that we can look at everything from fine art practice to curation, sculpture, painting, printmaking, but we've also got students that progress on to things like textiles, digital imaging, illustration. So we kind of suit learners that don't know exactly what they want to do when they start the first year, because it's a very open course. This course is delivered by specialist practitioners and our ethos is to produce learners that not only are well prepared for their next steps within education, but also really passionate and excited about their subject. OK, so uh, the extended diploma in graphic design um, is uh, quite a unique course in the area uh, and our selling point is we teach learners to work through the design process to help projects not only technically professional, uh, but uh, well researched commercially and viable graphic design concepts. But the main career roles that this course can lead to um, are quite a lot. Graphic design is a huge area of the creative industries with career progression within advertising, packaging design, branding, editorial design, motion graphics and illustration. We have had a huge number of learners moving on from this course to work within the industry, either as freelance designers running their own businesses or working for larger corporations. Jack Richardson created his own fashion brand set, which has grown nationally and internationally, worn by Skepta. Matthew Goodyear moved directly from our course to work for a design agency called Better Brand, starting as an intern before working up to a junior designer position. Sam Dunn, an illustrator who moved on from us to study illustration at university, has gone on to work for Kerrang! magazine. Uh, she's also done work for Nike and various musicians. Every year, our students work on live projects for real employers and clients. Last year, our students completed work for a local coffee shop. So what is our success or pass rate on the course? Well, our success rates on the course are always extremely high, with vast majority of learners always achieving aspirational targets. A majority of graphic design students progress onto higher education and some have moved onto an employment or apprenticeship within the creative industries. Hi, my name is Tom. I'm the course leader on uh, interactive design here at the Northern School of Art. Um, interactive design is a qualification that covers three main areas of the creative industries, uh, illustration, animation, and 3D modeling for game design or TV special effects. Um, within interactive design, we have a strong focus on digital industries, uh, but all of that is backed up with really good drawing skills and teaching you the, the fundamentals and the basics of creative practice. And throughout your time here, uh, you'll be participating in projects such as character design, uh, concept art, could be comic books, you might do bits of commercial work with advertising potentially, um, as well as game design uh, projects. Students have taken on all sorts of different projects uh, with real life customers from out in the real world. Uh, in the past, we've had students who've gone on to do some amazing things. Uh, Domarine Fox was one of our students here. She's an award-winning art director for Animation Houses in London. Um, we've had students who've gone on and worked with stop-motion animation companies as 3D stop-motion animators and model makers, um, working on things like the Sainsbury's Christmas advert campaign just a couple of years ago. Um, during your time here, uh, we'll try to teach you to be versatile, 
but what we find is that a lot of our students are really dedicated and so really get down to the hard graft and become really well developed animators, illustrators and 3D designers. Hi, I'm Neil McCormack. I'm the course leader for interior architecture and product design. This is a two year full time course. Students on this course go into uh, careers including interior design, architecture, product design, furniture, exhibition design, design for film and TV, transport design, product design and into teaching as well. Here we are in the bench shop and I've got some examples of furniture which students have been making. Uh, this is a piece of furniture which is designed to be flat pack and be used as a little stool or as a table um, or I can stack up and these are prototypes so these are the ones that were made before the final idea and you can see that this one has been used to mark out different seat ideas and different shapes and this stool was made using the CNC router and with that we can make things very accurately and quite quickly. Um, most of the students go to university after the course. Uh, last year, 50% of our students went to do architecture um, and generally have an excellent um, progression into higher education. So the photography course is a two year course and allows you to experiment with different styles and genres of photography. You will learn skills in digital photography and also how to use our dark rooms. Students get to decide what style of photographer they want to be over their two years of study looking at paths into commercial or fine art style photography, experimenting with fashion shoots and also documentary style projects. In the past, students have done many live briefs and most recently worked with Aging Better Middlesbrough to create stunning imagery for their latest campaign. There are many jobs in photography. Every shop or business you go into will either have an in-house photographer or a team of photographers they hire for shoots. Photography is incredibly important in advertising and is a huge part of the creative industry. Two past students are Eddie Maynard, who is a successful freelance photographer who has worked with music festivals around the world, and also Jack Boothby, who works Visual Soft and also works for GoPro. If you want to go into the fantastic world of photography and learn how to tell different stories in beautiful ways, then this course is for you. The extended diploma in textiles um, was two pathways. It's now one pathway, but it covers both pathways. So we do we basically cover the um, the areas that make money. So you've got your commercial print. Everybody needs wallpaper. Everybody needs bedding, gift wrap, um, fashion, fabric design, and as everybody needs costume. I said another two industries that are really um, booming in terms of jobs, graduates, theatre film. Students that have gone off to be visual merchandisers for John Lewis, IKEA, we've got one that went off to do fashions now, a senior buyer for River Island. Um, students that have gone off to do gift wrap, fashion fabrics, quite a lot go off to do um, degrees at Hartlepool. We feed, potentially we feed uh, the industry over there. The briefs are so wide because of the amount of products and things we do do. We have quite a lot of printers, we have quite a lot of makers. Uh, so we cover costume pieces, we cover digital, we cover STEM in terms of digital. We also do traditional screen printing and unusual techniques such as the ceramics and we build products. Um, this year, the students have also done a live brief with Barefoot Solutions where they've produced bags. They've also looked at eco um, food banks and locally. So obviously we use traditional techniques, but every year the staff continually um, research new and innovative ways in which we can actually um, produce. We've had glow in the dark screen printing ink. We've done screen printed masks that glow in the dark. We're actually researching uh, screen printing ink that you can use as a conductor. Um, so you're, you can actually use print, print a circuit board and light your lights from pieces of fabric. So we. We're researching into these really unusual ways in which textiles can be um, not just about the traditional little bit of knit and embroidery. It's a you know knit and embroidery with wires and lights and things is um, is new on our horizons. Welcome to A levels at the Northern School of Art. This is quite a unique A level pathway. Um, our learners will um, leave after two years with three A levels. We have a visual arts pathway, which is um, led by specialist 
fine artists and photographers. And we have a design pathway, which again is led by specialist textile artists and graphic designers. Um, and then learners can choose from either art history or English language. At the end of the first year, learners will have had a broad experience of both visual arts and the design, design um, arts. Um, and at this point, they will choose either to specialise in uh, from the design point of view, either graphics or textiles, and from the visual arts pathway, either fine art or photography. The pathways help to give learners a broader experience of what the arts are, especially when we're considering, you know, changing times in this new environment, that learners need to have an understanding of all backgrounds. And that also helps them make a really informed decision about what they are going to choose to specialise in. Um, Learners uh, will then be able to progress to a wide range of um, destinations, which could either be a direct um, route to university, such as graphics, illustration, fashion, criminology, illustration, etc., etc., or go down a more traditional route, which is a one year foundation course, which also prepares them for university. Um, we like learners here to be happy, successful, um, and we look forward to meeting you all. Thank you. Hi, this is Access to HE qualification. This is a qualification that's aimed at the 19 plus learner. For those of you that are returning to education for whatever reason, you could have had a family, jobs, a whole life. Um, it's a really good qualification in terms of it will give you those tools to hit a degree running, know how to successfully finish the degree, all the things that get hit with like a dissertation, assignments, deadlines, managing your finances, everything like that. What this qualification will do, it will build confidence, it will build your observational skills, your analytical skills, um, reflective skills, um, and you'll meet friends for life. So when you go off to do a degree, the fee that is attached to this course is wiped only on successful um, completion of the degree it gets wiped so some students decide to stay local and you know move on to our HE provision in Hartlepool some go further afield we've had some as far as Farnham um, Edinburgh and um, Sunderland this course is one of the best in the region um, it's held up as um, a beacon in terms of the quality of work that comes out of here distinctions are high portfolios, everyone gets into their first choice university and it's a really, really good programme, especially for the 19 plus learner. Uh, hi, I'm Sue, I'm the course leader for the foundation course. Um, the foundation course is quite a unique course in, in the college because it is a one year course. It's for students who are 18. You need to be 18, that is a requirement of the course. And so it's really for students who have done A-levels in a subject, normally art and design, but sometimes people haven't had a chance to do art and design at A-level and they want to do a course where they can experience art. They've always had a love for it. We also have students who have done EDs and they come on to us to do the foundation. It's designed as a transition between um, between the previous educational experience and getting you really ready for a degree to find out and discover which one of the many subject areas in art and design really kind of suits you and sorts your, suits your individuality and your kind of work skills. So on foundation we cover everything. What you're seeing as we go down this corridor is obviously a lot of painting. We don't only do painting, we have students who um, progress to do degrees in, in concept art, in illustration, in fashion, in graphic design, in 3D design, theatre set, all sorts of things, photography, a whole range of art and design is open to you if you do a foundation course. We cover kind of broad generic skills and then also you get a chance to focus a little bit more for your application for UCAS. We help you a lot with your application for UCAS. A big thing for foundation is it's about the only course where if you are 18 years old and you want to, to discover a degree and find out which is the best one for you without investing £9,000, the foundation course is free. So it's a one year experience, it helps you diagnose what you want to do, gives you experience of trying out all the different areas of art and design and it helps you decide 
without having to spend a lot of money so that when you do spend your mon money to invest on your degree, you're sure that you and you're confident you made the right choice. It's also a fun year, we hope. <laughs> Hello, my name's Stuart and I work here at the Northern School of Art. Uh, we're going to take you on a, a virtual tour today uh, around some of the facilities that, we, uh, that we've got here. Um, so yeah, stay tuned and we'll, uh, we'll go and see what we've got. So, we'll so it's important to know before we start our tour that for the facilities that I'm about to show you today uh, on our virtual open day, uh, will be changing very soon because we're getting this brand new building, as you've probably been told so far on the open day. Now this opens in 2021, so if you're a student that's going to be studying there, uh, then take note that the facilities that I'll show you today are just going to be the same, but they're just going to be brand new and in this building instead. Okay, so although the room might look different, when, we're, when it's in this building, the facilities and the machines and the equipment will all, all be the same. OK, so let's get this to a start. So this is the 3D workshop. Now, the 3D workshop is comprised of two different sections. So we've got the machine area and we've also got the bench area as well. So in the machine area, we've got uh, machines that as you as a student can use once you've been inducted which they are the pillar drills, the belt sanders um, and the bandsaws. Um, and we've also got machines that our staff can use on your behalf, such as the lathes and the planers. And behind us, we've got the 3D CNC machine, which is an amazing piece of kit. And next door, we have the, the, the bench shop, which is where you put everything together and you paint everything. Um, now that's comprised of all various benches and you've got the laser cutter in there, you've got a vac former and a spray booth. So we have got everything you need to make your, your items that you design uh, on your course. Um, also on each uh, different course, there might be a technician on hand to help you. So on 3D, we've got a technician uh, who is here uh, in the workshop pretty much every day um, to help you with any technical things to do with your with your projects um, and the same can be said with photography that photography have their own technicians um, we've got textiles and fine art they've got their own technicians as well uh, and lots of the other, other courses do as well and they for the technical help um, on on your projects so that's it for here we'll uh, we'll move on uh, to next so here we've got the art box and the art box is um, a very cheap uh, resource uh, for yourself. So you can buy various materials here, uh, including our very own Northern School of Arts uh, We've got some sketchbooks, we've got paper, card, paintbrushes, inks, uh, we've got glue, we've got uh, a mug, non school art mug. If you really want to take a drink out as well, so we've got various different things that you can uh, that you can buy here, um, and it's really really cheap as well, uh, which is great for yourself. You probably won't find it cheaper uh, anywhere else, which is great. So we'll move on. So just a quick visit to our art. Now in here we serve hot food, cold food on a day to day basis, things like drinks and snacks as well. Uh, at a really good price, so really reasonable, and also it's really nice as well. Um, so this is where you come at dinner time uh, and just chat with it. Um, you can also come down here at any time and do a little bit of work if, as well if you want to. Uh, options there for you. All right, so uh, we'll move on to the next point. I absolutely love good food and dust. Right, so this is the dark room. Now, photography use this space uh, quite a lot. Now, this is a really nice facility that we've got on site. Now, this is where you develop your photographs from film. So there's traditional layers. So not everything is digital on our course. And we teach you the really traditional skills of developing um, your own photographs. So you may even use uh, a Pringle tube as a camera and then go out and take a photo with it and then come back in here and develop that film. So you've not only made the camera yourself, you've also developed that photograph from it. Um, so it's a really nice facility and um, we're going to move on. So hold it. 
So this is the film and photography studio. I'm going to take a seat. Oh, it's really nice still. Now in here, as you can see, we've got the green screen, which is an amazing piece of kit to use uh, on film. Uh, we've also got all of the equipment that you could that you need to use on your course, and that can just be lent out to you. So like this light stand. We've also got the uh, other backgrounds as well for your photography shoots. So for example, if you want to go into fashion photography, you can do a fashion shoot against that background and it'll really make your images uh, stand out a lot. We've also got little booths in here, you can't see, they're just off the camera, uh, which is where we do our animation as well. So if you're on um, interactive design, then you will come in here and you will make your clay models, uh, animate them using our little booths. Now they really help because you can put all the lights and things in there uh, and take your photographs and create your animations. So it's a really nice joint area that we can use. So although I'm really enjoying sat down, uh, we're going to move on to our next place. So all over. So welcome to Textiles. Now Textiles had their workshop in the same studio. Uh, so as you can see behind me, they've got the rolling mills, we've got various equipment. Um, they do lots of screen printing on this course as well. That can all be seen behind us. Um, so it's a really nice creative atmosphere in here where they create all sorts of really nice, cool stuff um, out of textiles and ceramics and things like that. So talking about ceramics, we're actually going to go across the corridor and have a look in the ceramic studio. So follow me. So this is our ceramic studio. Now our ceramic studio gets used by not only textiles, but also fine art, um, some of foundation as well, uh, alongside any other course that might think that they need to use it, a bit like art and design as well, art and design use it. Um, so in here we do lots of different things to do with creating things out of clays in lots of different techniques. So we do things like casting, we do um, molding as well, but we've also got the glazes that we use um, that we also fire in the kiln. So your ceramic things that you've made uh, go in the kiln. Now we've got a, a technician on hand to help you on this course as well. Um, so it's a, it's a really nice facility to have here. Uh, and this will be, like I've said before, it will be taken over to the new building. So this is our library. Now in our library, we've got various books. We've got over 25,000 books. Uh, across this site and our Hartlepool uh, degree campus, uh, we share the we share them up. Um, so if there's a book over there, we can certainly bring it over here to help you with your research. So research is a very big thing, part of your projects you'll do. Uh, not everything can be found online. Quite a lot of things can be found in our books. Now there's a lot of art books, design books in there that will really help you with your projects. But we've also got things like journals. We've got things like design magazines as well. Uh, and our library staff, if they can't find what you're looking for, will certainly do their best to try and get it for you. OK, so that's the library and that's that's a really good facility to use uh, on site. There we go. So we'll, uh, we'll move on. So that concludes our tour of our campus. So thank you for following me uh, around. I hope that really gives you a bit of an insight into what it's like to study here with our facilities. Now, um, if you're in year 11, hopefully we'll see you in September. Uh, if you're in year 10 or below, then we'll hopefully see you in a few years time. But in the meantime, keep up to date on our social media, on our, uh, if you've got any questions, ask the live chat on our website, or you can just text questions to us. Um, you can email us, you can ring us up. And me and the team, me and the recruit team, also go to your schools as well. So if you see us at your careers fairs, if you see us at our parent meetings, then do come over and, and have a bit of a chat with us because we can certainly have a, have a chat about any questions that you've got about studying here. All right. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll pass you on to the next, next phase of the open day. So thank you very much.
everyone. My name is Teresa and I'm the Student Services Manager here at the Northern School of Art. I'm just going to take you through a short presentation to tell you a little bit about the support that our students can get whilst they're studying here. So we realise that coming to college can be quite daunting for some of our students. There's lots of new things to take on board and that's why we have our Student Services team to help you settle in and take you through those first three steps of starting at college and then the student services team are there with you to support you right the way through your time and your learner journey with us. The student support that we offer is very easy to access. We do have advisors that are specialist in a variety of different things such as pastoral issues and mental health and financial support. We operate what's called an open door policy so our students can come and access us as and when they need us. Obviously at the minute with our COVID secure arrangements, we do encourage our students to make an appointment to see us if they can. However, they can come and bob in to see us at any time that they feel that they need to chat through an issue or something that's worrying them. The way that we offer our support can vary. Um, we offer it in by one-to-one, -one, um, small groups, but we also provide a variety of different workshops for our students on a variety of different topics. Our students can also find lots of information on our notice boards throughout the college and we also have our virtual learning environment which has got lots of useful information on a variety of different topics. So the types of things that we help support our students with, um, it can be relationship issues, it can be around staying safe, keeping healthy, we support our students with disabilities and health problems. We have a team of learning support advisors that offer students with learning difficulties any additional learning support they need. And we can also help our students with their finances. So one of the main areas of support or the specialist areas of support that we provide is for our students that have got dyslexia. And we do have a higher proportion than usual of our students that have got dyslexia and I think that's because of the strengths that people with dyslexia bring to the creative environment. So for all our students we do do a dyslexia screening and the reason for that is that we don't want to miss out on anybody that will need our support. From there for anybody that needs it we'll provide one-to-one -one specialist tuition and that can provide support and help around spelling strategies planning and organising work and reading skills, depending on what the, the, that particular student um, requires. For those students that need a little bit of additional learning support, we have a dedicated team led by our specialist educational needs coordinator. And that support can again be one to one or it can be small group work. It can be outside the classroom, but it can also be within studios and classrooms. That support extends not just to learning support, but also includes social, emotional and behavioural support for any of those students that need that. The other type of support that we can offer it within college is counselling. And that is there for our students that might need a little bit more emotional support to help them alongside their studies. This is private and confidential service and it's open to all our students. It is on site and easily accessible again. On the other um, side of this slide we've got um, some examples of some other organisations that we work with and so that we provide our students with the best and the most appropriate type of support we work with all these additional organisations to make sure that if our students need a little bit of specialist support that we can't provide we've got a quick and easy route into that um, support for them. So that's all from me. Um, I will be part of the question and answer um, session so you can ask any questions if I've not covered anything that you want to hear about. But we'll now hear from a, a former student of ours, Alan. My name is Alan Best. I'm an illustrator and a teacher of art and design. What I'd like to do is just take you through one of my sketchbooks and share with you some of my drawings and doodles and pictures. Um, but more importantly, I'd like to share with you uh, why I studied at the Northern School of Art. Now, I studied the foundation course back in 2012, and this was just after I'd finished at sixth form, and I had a number of A-levels, 
and I just wasn't sure what to do with them at all. I didn't have a clue. I didn't know what I wanted to do in terms of my career or my creative practice. I've always been arty and I've always been creative. I knew that that was something which I wanted to do in life. And if I could make a bit of money from it as well, then even better. Um, so I chose a foundation course and it just proved to be the best decision. I was able to try out all sorts of different disciplines and experiment in ways which I'd never thought of before. So I got to try out the textiles and surface design on the foundation course, got to try out graphics, fine art, photography, and then eventually specialising in illustration. Now I believe um, this is down to the, the quality of teaching and lecturing which uh, I received on the foundation course. They were really, they were just fantastic at being able to identify my strengths and encourage me to experiment and challenge the way that I thought about my work, thought about um, how I made art and images and pictures. Um, because it, it's more than just about practicing technique, it's more than experimentation, it's about pushing and challenging the way that you um, the way that you think about the world around you and respond to it visually. So this was great. Um, and that led me on to studying an illustration degree at Hartlepool. Now I had I, I'd had a great time at uh, the Green Lane campus. The environment was fantastic. The atmosphere was great. I've made loads of great friends who I still speak to, speak to today. Um, and I just wanted to keep this going. I wanted to stay local. So Hartlepool was the best choice for me. And it was when the illustration course was just starting up as well. So it was all brand new and it was really exciting. And it was it was ideal. The illustration course was it was it was all about drawing. It was all about recording. Um, with now this, this, this was an important factor for me as well it was about the commercial aspect of it, of it as well so um that was that was incredible and and like i said before the, the quality of teaching on the degree course was also really good really encouraging supportive and the course was able to open a lot of doors for me as well i'd started working for the guardian whilst i was on the degree course and I then moved on to get a studio with friends as well so it was fantastic. Um, I'm getting towards the end of the sketchbook here but the habits which I've picked up along the way from foundation and, and the degree course they've just stuck with me always recording always keeping a sketchbook always experimenting trying out different things making notes jotting down ideas um, and it's it's still a practice which is like really important to my life nowadays when I'm teaching as well. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend um, going to the Northern School of Art, and it has had a really strong impact on me in my practice. So yeah, go and check it out. Welcome to the last part of um, this virtual open event. This is the live question and answer session. So this is your opportunity to submit questions to us. Um, and I'm joined by a number of colleagues and also graduates. But just before we get started, we're going to kick off with some introductions. So we'll start with, with Sue. Hi, I'm Sue. I run the foundation course here at the college. I'm Amanda, uh, mainly looking after A-levels. And I'm Teresa, student services manager. Uh, I'm Tom, I'm the course leader on graphic design, interactive design and film and TV. We're Abby and Owen, we're a two-person side based creative studio and we're alumni. And I've already introduced myself, I'm the recruitment manager. So, we will kick off with our first question and this one's for Tom. Um, what kind of work do you like to see in a student's portfolio, Tom, when they're coming for an interview? Um, so primarily we just want to see some really good uh, evidence of drawing and creativity and um, whether that is uh, on graphic design we'd like to see you know just any examples of you know any sort of posters or drawings that you might have created uh, any projects that you've done in school 
uh, or any personal work that you've done in interactive design. Again, we're looking for drawings, so we're looking for character designs and, and just really what, what it is that you really love about kind of your creative area. Okay, and then there's another question uh, from the same person. Um, what jobs are available after studying graphics? And maybe um, Abby and Owen can, can yeah. chip in with this one as well. So what, what yeah. kind of, other than graphic design, obviously, what, what other areas could people well, go Well, I think to? the thing about graphic design is that the things that we learned on the course were very much based around ideas generation and creativity and establishing a commercial mindset. So I think that graphics is probably the most open of, of all the courses from my perspective uh, because that you can lend that creative approach to, to virtually any uh, creative channel. I mean, speaking of ourselves, we, we studied graphic design, but we've primarily built our, our freelance career as illustrators. But I think that commercial mindset that we established on the graphics course is what's enabled us to do that. Yeah, a few people we know uh, studied the course couldn't have more different jobs now and um, some people do go into graphic design yes that is a very open market it's fairly easy to get a job because there's so many needed and um, but some have went into motion graphics website design and um, one of my friends who did the course is um, doing children's books and um, so lots of like illustration like that so it's hugely different and as Owen said I think it's very versatile for lots of different jobs yeah, motion graphics and, and animation is, is an area that is kind of booming at the moment, and an area that the graphics course here we're, we're really trying to embrace and develop your skills in. So, you know, motion graphics and animation um, are, are two areas that we're really trying to push push for. But, you know, you could go on and work as a, as a designer designing logos and branding for, for companies, or you could go on to um, do illustration. Um, or it could be that you you work in promotion and designing t-shirts and you may, you might be designing um, posters or CD covers. There's a whole range of different things. And as uh, Owen said, um, graphic design is one of those industries that is so open. Um, you can go into a, a huge different range of, of careers from it. Thanks, guys. Um, so I'm going to open this one out to the floor and it's asking about the industry links that we have on our courses at FE level. So has there been any kind of work experience that our students been involved in or responding to any live briefs? Um, is there anything that you might be able to add? I think that our courses um, naturally have some work experience and certainly some live built briefs built into most of the projects, especially with the new qualification, the UAL. Um, it's almost a requirement, but uh, we've worked with people in the community, my background is community art, so I've always been involved with some kind of community project which involves young people working with um, other schools, um, skateboard parks, um, festivals, there's a, a little festival in Hartlepool that people get involved in regularly. But we were also visiting uh, lecture visiting artists come in too, you know, which we've often been invited to their studios, offered some work experience. So um, generally across the college, I'd expect most courses would be offering some kind of live project, but mm -hmm. I would kind of always think graphics and yeah. photography tend to have some, some little caucus really. Yeah, we um, every single year we, we run a project which is all about um, social engagement, so that is engaging with the community and engaging with um, charities mainly. Um, so on graphic design, interactive design and film and TV, all of our students are actually actively seeking for um, to work with clients, uh, to work with charities and um, to try and improve uh, the messages that they are communicating. So last year we worked with um, Mind, the mental health charity, on their Aging Better campaign. We worked with photography and um, photography course here and our students produced um, animations, films, uh, photography and um, graphic design media uh, that would be used by MIND in the local area. But we've worked with all sorts of different companies over the time. Um, we also have endorsed projects, so, so some of our um, assignment briefs are uh, approved by local design firms. Um, we've worked with Better Brand Agency, who are a fantastic company um, locally doing international and national projects and they've been uh, working with us to approve our projects. I think uh, fashion has worked quite a lot. It's done a, a project um, recently with Nike 
and quite often get ex-students who are working in the fashion industry to come down and set briefs as well. Great, thank you. Um, so this one's for Sue. Uh, so we've got somebody who's studying uh, an A-level at the moment and they don't know whether to go straight on to university or to do a foundation diploma. Mm -hmm. um, so what advice would you give to, to this person? Well, they're doing, they're doing, you're doing the right thing to start with just by having, have, doing your research and finding out what, what places have to offer. Um, so talk to people at, at uni, talk to students who are at uni. Um, but, but we find that foundation is just such a, a good preparatory experience for people, a good transition experience. It helps you find out what you want to do and be much more sure about what you want to do. And it gives you much more confidence in your choices when you do make them. And of course, a big, a big point, of the, uh, selling point, of course, at the moment is, is that if you are 18, you're not having to pay fees to do the foundation. So you're, you're, you're not put in the position of, of, sort of having to decide to go to uni and potentially making the, the wrong choice if you're not sure about them. So it, it, it prepares you a lot better. It helps. We, we cover all areas of, of art and design in the foundation course, so you get a good a good spread of experience really so by the time you do choose a course at uni you're much more sure and you're more likely to thrive when you are there. Okay, um, slightly similar question but for a lower age range so somebody that's leaving school but wanting to go into uni would you recommend they do an A-level pathway or a UAL diploma? I think I'll answer that one having been course leader for the UAL and now look after the A-levels I think it's very much dependent on the individual and what they want and uh, if you know that it's just something purely creative then potentially you need to go and you know what area you want to work in then it potentially might be a UAL qualification the BTEC a two-year program and um, which is nationally recognized by the art industries now the A-level route is the route that I went down and then into a foundation and um, um, the A-level route is really good in terms of allowing you to try a range of different A levels without having to specialise. But if I was going to then choose to move into the arts from my A levels, I would certainly be considering a foundation course because that kind of gives you that extra level of preparation. Um, so, I mean, my thoughts are if you're unsure, then you need to find out more about the A level programme. If you absolutely know that all you want to do is interactive design then you need to go and find out about that course because you'll get an awful lot of specialism uh, in, the special, in the specialist area but as you've just been saying and also it doesn't close all your doors down so I think that you've got to go if you're unsure go and see both courses yeah, go yeah. and see both course leaders and come and see the show because that helps again um, and because it's purely down to an individual and what your personal circumstances are, all routes, if you're passionate, will get you where you want to go. And the interview is really important as well. So, so when we interview um, you as a student, as a prospective student, um, we will always be looking out for what is the best course for you, what is the right course. So, um, you know, other course leaders and other lecturers will quite often call me down and say, actually, I think this student is far more graphic design orientated or far more interactive design orientated, or they, they, they like using cameras, but they want to make films. Mm -hmm. and, and then we will advise you the best that we can yeah. whilst you're yeah. here. There's also a, 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 trans, a transition period when you arrive in the college. So if you find that the course isn't right for you, we can actually transfer you whilst you're actually here. And that's not a big deal. We have students do it every year. Um, but we try to advise you in that first stage as much as we can so you're on the right course. Um, but following on from what Amanda said, really, um, yeah, I think if you if you aren't sure on what your what path you want to go down, you want to try your hand at a few things and you're quite academic, you want to do English um, potentially as, a, as an A-level subject, then A-level is the, the route to go down. If you're a creative person who maybe doesn't like exams <laughs> then the UAL diplomas are a fantastic one and if you're not sure on what creative route you want to go down we also have the art and design mm. um, diploma which is a general course so you get that experience of lots of different areas without having to do the exams if there is trouble for you. I, I would like to just second the point you made there about sort of being guided onto the right course because um, when I actually, my first interview here, 
was for the fine art course and I was absolutely convinced that's what I was going to do because I've done general art and design in the past and I was very into drawing and um, something about it I didn't feel like it was quite the right route for me and it, I, it was advised to me that I try for graphics and I instantly hit it off with both of my lecturers and the briefs looked really exciting and I, I basically just completely changed my mind on the spot so it's always worth going for an interview and seeing even if you, the, the decision is that it's not the right course for you there might be something that is perfect for you. I think that's a really good point it's very really difficult to know what exactly you want to do. Best thing to do is just come along whenever you can, see what we do, attend one of these um, and find out as much as you can. But we are definitely the best place for a creative career. <laughs> I like how I've got that one in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one's for Teresa. Uh, my son is autistic and can he have extra support in the interview process and also whilst he's still just studying? Yes. So as I mentioned in the presentation, we've got a specialist team um, that look out, uh, look out for our students that have got specialist needs. And um, so beforehand, um, right from the beginning of the application process, I was saying call Carol would reach out um, to parents and students that would require any additional support and we'd be able to provide that at interview um, and also transition support. So um, taster sessions, taster days, and um, just to make sure that our students settle in. Great. And they're going to do great things. Yeah. Um, so Abby and Owen, uh, you touched upon uh, what you do at the moment, but can you just um, re refresh us again what, what you're doing with your um, kind of creative venture uh, and what's the best piece of advice that you that you were given whilst you were studying here? Um, this is your opportunity to plug your business. <laughs> <laughs> So I think the easiest thing to do is, we're very visual people, we do, our career is visual. So if you go on abbyandowen.com, you can see what we've been up to. Um, but just for now, I think we do a lot of um, public artwork, um, campaigns, um, packaging, um, just all sorts of really branding. And it, it's quite a lot of um, pretty, avenues yeah. really. We do a lot of illustration. Um, we sell our own prints as well. So there's a few different like avenues we have on a, um, at, the, at the moment. Um, in terms of advice? I think, I think the best piece of advice I ever had was the, the process that I was taught. Um, we had a, a very rigorous process to follow um, right from the outset, which was to research every brief um, in as much detail as possible. Um, and from that point on to experiment with the ideas that, that arose and from that point to develop the idea onwards from there. And I still use that method now, um, you know, 10 years on, and it, it's just a winner. It works for me every time. And I think learning those fundamentals before you sit down in front of a machine and start to develop an idea and um, just, just think outside the box. You know, it all starts with a pencil. And, and that stuck with me. Yeah, that's a very good one actually. Yeah. Um, because we, we still do that now, just on a, a short scale. Um, and you are always advised not to rush ahead because I think the first thing you want to do when you get a brief is just work on the final piece. But you need to do that process to get the best results. So yeah, I think it's a really good one. So you both stuck around with the Northern School of Art and you progressed to the Harvey Cole site. Um, was that a smooth transition? Um, how, how did you find it going from uh, Middlesbrough over to Hartlepool to do your degree? I, I think it was really smooth because mm. we went with uh, a lot of our, our peers and um, I made some terrific friends when I was here. Um, me and Abby met here and obviously we forged a creative partnership um, as well as, a, as being actual partners. <laughs> um, and uh, we, it was just, it was really quite a graceful transition. Um, we got on really well again with the course leaders. Um, the I felt like it was a natural progression on to being more autonomous and self-directed um, and I, I just think that the, the way that the course was structured really nicely complemented what we've done here um, so I, I'm very pleased with my choice and I think it really acted as the springboard for our career as creatives 
um, we, we ended up doing the artwork at Hartlepool Railway Station as part of the competition and um, that the university put on alongside with Grand Central and things just really kicked off for us from there, didn't they? So, yeah, there was lots of opportunities came, I think, um, by making that choice. And with it being the same institution, I feel like it has that same flavour, like everyone's very passionate, there's a sense of community. Um, yeah, I, fantastic. And I think especially knowing um, our friends that have went to other universities, we can sort of directly compare some of the time. And, yeah, um, it's nice we, Yeah, we realised just how lucky we were. A good example is um, the fact that we had our own um, maths that we could work on every day um, if we wanted to. And um, some of our friends in other big unis didn't have that option. They had to hot desk or book in at an IT suite and um, they sort of had to have their own machine, which um, isn't always an option for some people. Um, Anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, to just to second that, we, we had our own dedicated machines the whole time we were here, the whole time we were at the Hartlepool campus. We never had to fight for equipment. Um, and then there's just the, as you say, the community aspect was just marvellous. The fact that, you know, if you wanted to speak to a photography student to get some photography for some posters or you wanted some film putting together, you are surrounded by creative people you can collaborate with, yeah. which is just superb. There's a good amount of contact time as well. Um, you know, the tutors always had time for you um, to discuss your project. Again, with other unis, it might be the case that you have to book in and you only get very small slots over an entire project and sometimes you just want to talk through an idea like now um, and I feel like that was um, consistent through both um, institutions. Yeah, fabulous and the work that you did for Hartlepool um, train station is still there isn't it so if you, if you haven't seen it check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so this one's for probably Amanda, Amanda might be best place for this. Uh, somebody's toying between doing fashion or textiles. What are the what's the main difference between those areas? Would you say? I would think that there is a lot of crossover, but it becomes a little bit more specialised here. Um, the course leader is the same for textiles as fashion. So again, you can be guided, you come and have a little chat, at interview, you bring some of your work. But for me, I would say that fashion, I'm definitely on a, on a design track. I'm definitely thinking about the body, the figure, it could be illustration, it could be designing clothes, um, accessories, thinking about promotion, business. Textiles, I've got to go straight in there for all it is can still be very design based, it's very tactile, you're looking at surface, you're looking at unusual materials that you can work with and then there is sometimes a very natural leap into um, textiles into fashion um, and that's something you might want to consider. Um, but also textiles has got a really lovely relationship with people who like to draw because if you think of it as a surface then you could be working on, on surfaces which don't necessarily need to be fabrics, they could actually be washing machines, skateboards, anything that's got a surface. So it links really well with graphics and illustration. So I think the more you find out, the more you can find your specialist direction because it's going to be different for everybody. Um, and that unique twist that you might bring to it might be the one that offers you that kind of job opportunity. So I guess if you were to apply here and you're unsure, I'd ask to apply to both. Yeah. Um, I'd make sure I got interviewed um, with that in mind, being quite frank, I'm unsure. This is what I've been enjoying doing, this is what I've done, this, these are the kind of things I'm not so sure about, and let the course guide you. And again, you can still move from one course to the other, you know. So not a problem. Um wide, wide areas to, to move into are quite exciting, especially like colour and fabric. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just to finish off, we've got um, the last couple of questions about the new build, which is a, a really exciting time for us. So next September, we're going to be in brand new premises in the heart of Middlesbrough. Um, so we're being asked, um, will they be free transport to the Middlesbrough site? Um, and the other question is, will the facilities be the same or will there be newer facilities at the new build? Um, so we'll answer the transport, transport one first. 
Um, I can tell you that we are looking to put on free transport for students making use of the, the public um, transport services that are running with the Reva. Um, and we're a lot more accessible to people who live um, as far north as Sunderland, people that live in County Durham, and also as, south, uh, as far south as, as North Allerton as well. Um, so that'll be really exciting for us. In terms of the facilities, uh, does anyone else want to answer this? How exciting. Yeah. <laughs> We've all been consulted on what we think would best suit our courses. Um, and the exciting things for us to think about is those collaborations that we like to do, you know, graphics and photography, all of those kind of things have been thought about. And um, so, yeah, um, and rooms that have a lot of flexibility, rooms that have got specialism areas, um, specialist floors even. So I think it's really exciting. And Brand new film and TV studio, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, uh, yeah, we've got um, been involved with the architects in in every stage, designing them specifically for um, kind of our creative areas. So film, TV, interactive design, all very closely linked, and and share a big open studio, which kind of be divided into, into specialist areas. So it's very exciting, big open, flexible space, which is what I like. Cool. Right, so that wraps up the Q&A. Thank you everybody for taking part in that. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it and you've found out um, the information that you were looking for. Uh, if you kind of go away from this and think, well, actually, I wish I'd said this, um, do get in touch with us. We've got a recruitment team that are on hand um, all uh, throughout the week. Uh, you can email us, you can phone us, you can also talk to us live on our website through the live chat function as well. Um, and yeah, just check us out on our website and we hope to hear from you soon. So thanks very much.